If you have a shoulder problem, you're going to want to watch this. And I want to show you a classic sign of having a clavicle subluxation. So if you think your clavicle is out of alignment, this is a great test. So what I'm going to have you do is bend both arms. Yep. And I want you to raise this one straight up side. Okay, how's that feel? Good. And we're going up to the top of his head here, just above his head, and go ahead with that arm. And look at that, that side, okay, lower it. So this side's going about three, four inches lower than the right one. So, and I assume you have some restriction there in that left shoulder. Yeah, so then when we see that, we then wanna check his clavicle. And there's a simple way to do that, actually. So we're gonna bring him down here, and then, do you mind taking that off? Ladies, easy now. <laughs> Okay, just kidding. We're gonna check his clavicle with the hands and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, right? You can do this in the mirror for yourself, but what you do is, come on over here. Look at my thumbs, they're resting on top of his clavicle and I'm bringing my thumbs together so you can see the difference in height. And that difference is between, just from eyeballing it, between five and seven millimeters, right? So that would be something we would want to x-ray. If it's seven millimeters or more, that means you have a separation of your sternoclavicular joint and it needs to be taped down for 10 weeks. And we did a video on that and he just finished his 10 weeks, like four weeks ago. And I'm happy to say great recovery. His clavicle now held all the sharpies of fiber uh, held and repaired in that area and held the joint stable. So it takes 10 weeks for people that have a separation of seven millimeters or more. And then sometimes the clavicle drops down. Usually it goes up and medial, uh, not down. But in this situation, he's got left shoulder pain. His left shoulder, the clavicle's higher on the inside. He also has limited range of motion. So if somebody's clavicle was lower on this side, it would be actually easy for them to raise their arm up like that. It could be a couple of other things, but that's a pretty good indicator. So we're going to go ahead and correct that. And I'm going to show you guys how, but there's some other things going on with his shoulders. So just wait here, face me. Step back, but don't trip. There we go. Okay, hands out in front of you. And I want you to resist me. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to check him for an anterior humerus. And there's, the humerus is this. It's not your, well, it's at the top of your funny bone, huh? But there's nothing humerus about the humerus bone. It's this bone right here. It goes right into the shoulder socket. There's a, a labrum in here and rotator cuff muscles that stabilize the shoulder in here. And a lot of times people are doing things in front of them or above their head and the shoulder, the humerus bone, right? here subluxates forward so if you carry lots of heavy things or you're carrying heavy groceries in one arm it can pull that shoulder out of the socket a little bit and just cause a subluxation not a separation not the same thing not a dislocation but you might wash yourself scrub your shoulder the opposite shoulder and have like tightness or it feels like it's gonna pop out even like it's gonna dislocate maybe that usually means you have do you have that on this shoulder yeah I've Okay, mm -hmm. so that means usually it's an anterior subluxation. Maybe he has a history. Do you have a history of ever dislocating your shoulder? No. no. But okay. A lot of times they. It's gonna pop out. Yeah, okay. That. Well, there you go. Let's prevent that from happening again. So we're going to correct his anterior humerus. We're going to probably check his elbow too, but and then we're going to correct his clavicle. All right, let's get started. So let's have you lay on your back. And I want to check your neck and relax here. So his neck, all the nerves in his neck go to the muscles in the shoulder. So I want to make sure that the nerve supply to his muscles in his shoulder, which I just tested a minute ago, are not interfered with. So we're checking here for subluxations in his spine. And I found one, C6. That controls the bicep muscle, among other muscles. But we needed to correct that. Relax here. Okay, now we're gonna test him laying down, arms out for the anterior humerus. Again, ready? On three, one, two, three, resist. Does that hurt? Um, a, a little bit. On this arm, arm yeah. on the left arm? Yeah. Okay, so I want you to slide down for me if you could. More. Yep, there you go, drop back. So there's a lot of ways to adjust his clavicle. I'm gonna show you a few ways, all right? One is using a drop table here, where the table's gonna drop down below us. Turn your face to the left. And by the way, folks, there's another muscle test I can do for his clavicle that I didn't show you. Palm out and keep the elbows straight and one, two, three, resist. 
That was really weak. Um, he didn't even give me any. All right, we ready? Let's do that again. One, two, three, resist. Still extremely weak. So that's, that's the other muscle test, the sternoclavicular for the joint there. So we need to correct that. Deep breath in, turn your face to the left. Good, and blow out. Did you feel that go back into place a little bit on that one? A little bit. All right, now come on and stand up, come around here. So I just showed you how we muscle test both the sternoclavicular joint and the glenohumeral joint. Face the camera, better but not 100%. Okay, now, come on over here. I want you to lay with the left side down. So I'm just, you guys aren't gonna be able to see this, sorry, but I'm just gonna adjust this clavicle in a side lying position. It's just a different technique without the drop. And just relax yourself here. Good, stand up for me. And face the camera. Much better. It's not perfect yet, but it's much better. So we're gonna see him again. We're gonna keep correcting it, but it's on that verge of five to seven millimeters. It's close when I eyeball it, but really the best thing to do is take an X-ray and, uh, and really check it and make sure if you think that it's seven millimeters difference, the height. Okay, it doesn't look like much, so you gotta have a good eye for that. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for tubing in. Thanks for doing this video. Oh yeah, we have to adjust your, oh, hold on a sec. We have to adjust this uh, humerus, sit right here. Okay, so we're gonna adjust the anterior humerus now, I almost forgot. There are a couple of ways to do that. And this is one of the most common ways. Relax here. Did you hear that? A little pop there, yeah. Okay, stand up. Now I want you to bend your elbows and I want you to raise them up one at a time. Let's see how that is. That was the good one. Mm -hmm. How's that? It feels better. He's now going above his head now. So now he's going evenly on both sides. This still needs a little bit of correction, the clavicle, but you're all set. Okay, don't do anything above the head today. Okay. All right? Yeah. Sorry about that. Thanks for tubing in. Finally, okay, this time I'm serious. Thank you guys so much. If you got anything from this video, or even if you just like this view of the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building, give me a like and don't forget to subscribe. Appreciate you guys.